Well, let me bring in Jill Rutter now. I mean, Jill, what, what, do you, what do you make of what you've just heard from Tricia about when they, when they hear how government was functioning, their natural reaction? I think it's a very natural reaction. It's an appalling picture of people who, after all, being paid by all of us to run government effectively on our behalf and the fact that they that relationships are so bad that a lot of the time people in number 10 seem to be trying to manage around and manage out the prime minister because they think that things will be even worse if they do involve the prime minister is a sort of condemnation of the whole system the fact that you know people are so complacent think things are going okay when there is mounting evidence that it isn't and the fact and i think lee kane said this that in a sense, you can forgive some of the missed decisions in the first wave, but then the second lockdown and the chaos around that really is unforgivable. Because as Trisha was just saying, they should have learnt lessons from what they did wrong in March to make sure there wasn't a repeat, and yet we had that repeat in the autumn. Right, but you, you've been around government for a, a long time. I mean, is what you're hearing unique to that government, or you know, do people like that exist in government normally? I think that, obviously, as Dominic Cummings said, this was a crisis on a scale that nobody who'd been in government in the previous 50, 60 years had had to confront. So aim off for that. But I don't think that any government I ever worked in would have had that level of, uh, you know, appalling language about people you were supposed to be working as professionals with. And I think anyone who works in any normal workplace will be pretty shocked by the fact that people, and including civil servants, not just the political advisers, were pinging messages, just you know, denigrating their colleagues to such an extent that the idea that people could be working together productively, I mean, the fact that Dominic Cummings defense against that uh, message about Helen McNamara was, well, I was even ruder about the men. I mean, it's just an appalling culture to be working in. Um, and but I think- not normal, what, is, is the point. It's not normal. Within government, it's no. not normal, and it's not normal anywhere else. And, you know, I mean, government's not an exception to that. Now, Trisha also said, pointed out the lack of diversity, and that that was the big problem. You had a load of people who basically thought the same way, looked the same way, came from the same sort of backgrounds, thinking the same sorts of things. That's a massive structural problem for government, isn't it? Well, the government Still. is the government is aware that it needs to do something about diversity, even though ministers now are sort of rowing back on diversity initiatives. But it was pretty clear at the time that if you're going to have basically a lot of white blokes who you know live in nice houses with gardens you know are they able to empathize with somebody you know on benefits in a low paid role having to go into work with kids who are home from school in a flat um you know it was always going to be a problem and you know it seemed early on that actually the government should have been alive enough to think we need to be thinking not just about people like us who actually have it relatively easy through COVID. We need to be thinking about the people who really are having a really difficult time and put ourselves in their shoes and ask, how do we make policies that work for them, not just for people like us? And I think that was a very clear failure throughout. 